What is up YouTube, Tyler Seacrest here. Today I have a special guest with me, no one other than my partner and brother, Chase Seacrest, Seacrest Marketing Group's general contractor and in-house draftsman. Um, today we're gonna talk about how to handle a seller's market. Welcome to the Weekly Tea. Look, I'm not gonna be everybody's cup of tea, and I'm cool with that. So like I said, guys, uh, in this video, I've got a special guest with me. You're gonna see a lot more of him on the channel. Um, it's my brother. He's, uh, he's Secrets Marketing Group's general contractor and he's a partner. Um, I thought it would be cool to bring him on the channel and, and just get his perspective on some of these topics and um, just kind of introduce him to you guys. You're gonna see a lot more of him. So the topic of today's video is how to handle a seller's market. Everybody knows we're in a seller's market right now. It's driven mainly by low inventory, low interest rates, um, and we've got a really, really high demand. I'm just gonna kick it off, pass it with Chase. Chase, what do you think is, I mean, one of the biggest things, honestly, is trying to get with an agent that like deals with this. So somebody who's constantly on the phone, but constantly like actually working for the actual person. You need to get with a high profile agent, something, someone like Tyler. Uh, he, do, he deals a lot with other transactions that are very intense, that are very quick. Um, he deals with a lot of ranges too, as far as from the very lows to the very highs. So he's very multifaceted, he's very quick, and he's very deliberate on where he wants to actually try to I don't know where to go. Like yeah, that. so I'll, I'll kind of chime in and take over on that. He's exactly right. You want to get with a high profile agent, somebody who's got a ton of experience, um, someone who not only walks the walk, talks the talk, they've been there, they've done that. Another element to handle this seller's market would be to get your financing in order. Get your pre-approval in the bag, ready to roll. Um, if you're looking to buy a house and you're gonna pay cash, whether you're downsizing and you're reusing a lot of that equity. Another facet to handle the seller's market that we're in and we're experiencing is to get your financing in order. Um, I can't stress this enough, getting prepared. Part of that preparation, not only getting with a high profile agent, somebody who's embedded, has a high um, network and who can connect you to off-market deals, things of that nature, it's having a high profile loan officer. You're gonna want to work with an LO who works for an awesome lending institution first and foremost. In my opinion, a big pillar to some of these LOs are the systems and the support they have on the back end. We have several awesome local lending institutions. We actually have one of the largest, the largest lender in the Midwest was founded here in Fort Wayne, Ruff Home Mortgage, awesome company. And it's super cool that it was founded right here in Fort Wayne. But you wanna get with an LO who's got a lot of experience, somebody who helps buyers and sellers on the regular. If you're just looking to buy, if you're a first time home buyer and you're looking to buy, if you're a seller and who needs to sell and then buy, or if you need a new construction loan or what have you. You want somebody who's experienced all of it because these loan programs that they're, they're qualifying people for and their underwriters are underwriting, they constantly change, um, especially if they're government, um, they're government programs and government loans. So you're gonna want somebody who has been in the business a long time, who can navigate you through all of that because every situation is different. Just because I handle anywhere between you know, 75 to 125 transactions a year, every single one is different. I am not kidding. There's, there's always a quirk uh, to someone's situation. What's super cool is, Given the amount of transactions me and my preferred lenders um, have walked through together, chances are we've, we've seen it before and we know exactly what we need to do or exactly how to pivot and get around it to still get the job done. So that is an undervalued asset in my opinion, is your realtor, LO, team or combo. That is a big proponent or the, a, big, uh, it's a big form of the preparation. Get prepared, get your financing in order. That's tip number two. Um, tip number three, I'm gonna pass the chase. What do you got? You gotta see those listings. 
on the first hit, when they first try to go out, you have to take the time to go out there no matter what. In a seller's market, people are gonna be on it hot. But get with your agent, try to get some kind of listing and just get to the actual location. Don't go on the premises until you're actually instructed to or if you're okay with it, but just go around, see how the neighborhood feels, see how the area feels, and just get an understanding of where you're gonna be. Um, if you like it, if you don't like it, biggest thing is relate that to your agent. Your agent can do a lot of that work and can understand it and can go back to the client to see if there's any wiggle room for anything that you might want for those changes. But get out there and see it um, as soon as you possibly can. Yeah, and I'll elaborate on that too. A lot of sellers right now are dragging out the process to sell their place. If they've got a, an attractive home that they know they're gonna get a lot of activity on, They'll list it and then drag it out to five, six days to get as many offers as they can to maybe cause a bidding war or something of that nature. Um, and then the caveat to that, there are some sellers who just hate selling and buying and moving just in general. And they want it to be quick, painless and, and simple and easy. So naturally, you know, everybody's going to have a number in their head. And in my experience, if you can get in the door first and you match that number, yep they may not want to deal with showing the house 30 sometimes you know you got to be mindful it interrupts their life whether it's a single individual a married couple married couple with children you know everybody has a work schedule and family stuff there has been times where a property's gotten listed i've sent it to a client we got in immediately put an awesome offer on the table and they took it bada bing bada boom it was done we didn't have to compete with anybody but and it was all because my client did exactly what they needed to do and was to get into the property you know, as soon as they could. That doesn't always happen, but I will say this confidently, you are much more likely to get the property if you come in first or early and you put something good on the table out of the gate. Tip number four for this video is gonna be no lowball offers. Guys, tell your dad who bought a house in 1995, take a hike, take a back seat. Sorry, man, things are done. Totally different since uh, 2008. This is not the market to come in and offer somebody 20 grand below list price on a house that you know has been on the market for a few days. It's just not. I mean, I don't know how else to you know put it to you. Even homes that have been listed for you know a month or two, there's some people who try to you know do do that and uh, doesn't really go their way. Your best asset in gauging that is to use your agent. Your agent should be experienced enough and is a professional to know the market, know some of these things. And if you are questioning your agent, then it sounds like you need a new agent because that trust, it needs to be, uh, it needs to be rock solid. And um, that's the other caveat too, is you guys really need to listen to your agent. You know, we're in this, I'm every day, every day, every day, every day, you know, 10 to $20 million worth of real estate a year to somebody who may sell, you know, a million over their entire life, you know, it's, it's experience, you guys have to trust your agent. I, I understand how you feel and think sometimes, but the reality of the situation is gonna be this, and I pride myself on how I've conducted my business. I just, it's very black and white. I give you the facts, and then it's on you to make the decision. So, no lowball offers, you know? Be realistic, understand what you're getting yourself into, um, trust your agent, and uh, you'll have a positive experience. Can I jump on that? Go ahead. Another caveat to that would be really, Everyone has their own valuation to something. I might think a property's worth 100 grand, the seller thinks it's 150. There's just no mix matching right there. You, in the seller's market, the biggest thing is, is you're low on inventory, so that price is going to be high regardless, and they're gonna get it, or they're gonna get somewhere close to it, and that's why they did it. But you can't take your valuation as the actual list price. The list price is what they have it at. Like right. List price is you know where it's at. There's always you know there's always room for negotiation, but just don't be unrealistic with your expectations. And like and on the back side of that, I've helped some people get a property fifty thousand dollars below you know list price. But again, it's contextual to the property. You know, it just depends if it's a fresh listing or a fresh piece of ground in a really hot area. Dude, you're not gonna get it <laughs> on a discount. You're gonna either pay the price or you're gonna pay premium for it because of how much activity there is. Yeah, just uh, know what you're getting yourself into. A fifth, a fifth uh, pointer on how to handle the seller's market would be to go easy on the requests. And I wanna say this, like no weird requests. And I don't wanna, what I'm about to say, don't, like I don't think is weird. I'm just using that as a general term. Um, you know, don't ask for 
personal property if you don't need it. Don't make the seller's life any more difficult than it already is. In this seller's market, the more you can play towards their cards, the more likely you are of you know, getting the property. I've seen some people, you know, outside of the normal stuff, you know, always get the home inspected, you know, have your appraisal contingency in there, like all that stuff is, you know, always have that. But don't make it contingent on, you know, a bunch of other crap, you know, don't muddy up the deal, just don't play games and um, it'll work in your favor. And last but not least, I think Chase is gonna talk about this last point. You gotta make a decision. The longer you sit on it, the longer you're gonna be thinking about it, the long, or the quicker it's gonna go. You Again, it's that, low inventory it's that low uh supply or yeah the supply that you're going to get versus having so many people actually wanting it you're, it's going to go quick but you got to make a decision be decisive and so you're not wasting a lot of people's time your time uh the seller's time or even your agent's time specifically tyler he's pretty intense on that one be decisive and i know that's easy for me to say um but that's why you need to spend time getting prepared mm -hmm spend the time educating yourself. Uh, if, if you've done all of that, your agent's gonna have set your expectations. They're gonna let you know, you know what type of home is kind of in your budget. You're gonna be looking at the market more, so you're gonna see what your, what your dollars can get you. And when a property does get listed, you know, the things that are important to you, make sure your agent gets that stuff to you, you know, ASAP. That way you can thoroughly review the information and then find out if it's worth your time to go look at the property or not. And then when you do get inside the property, understand the sooner you put an offer in, the higher chance you have of getting it. So don't feel rushed that you've got to put an offer in, but I mean, go in there intentionally. Go in there intentionally. I'm not gonna be able to get you in there a second or third time. I mean, I, I probably can get you in a second or third time, but the, the, per, the other person who came in right after you already put the offer, the winning offer on the table when you called mom to come look at it because you want her to get a second set of eyes on it. That's the other thing too, is if you've got a support system, I know the younger generation feels the need to get you know approval from siblings or parents or things of that nature. Have an honest conversation with them up front. Be like, hey guys, I'm gonna be shopping for a home. I'm only gonna get you know one good shot at you know looking at this thing before I need to make a decision. I would feel more comfortable if you attended the uh, showings with me so that I can just get a second good set of eyes. Just people you trust, people in your circle. It never hurts to have you know a ton of eyes on something. Some things always get missed and it's just good to have people that you trust because you can count on them, you can lean on them for their ex expertise and their experiences, whatever level that is. I would, I would highly recommend just be decisive uh, and be very intentional. So guys, just to recap on this video, um, Chase and I have hit six uh, pretty broad you know, topics on how to handle a seller's market like we're in. One, get with an agent. Two, get your financing in order. Three, get into the property as soon as you can. Four, no lowball offers. Five, just no weird requests. And six, be decisive. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. If you've made it this far, please hit the, uh, hit the like button. Again, it helps the algorithm on YouTube. It helps uh, my videos get put in front of more people and I can get a lot of this information out to just more people who might find it useful. So. Hit that like button. Again, we'll see you guys in the next one.